Hello. Good afternoon to all. Mr. Prathmesh, sir, is my voice audible? Yes, I can hear you. Yes, sir. OK. Good afternoon, all. Uh, the students of uh, Government Engineering College, Civil Engineering Department, Baruj, and the respected faculty members at the department. On behalf of Civil Engineering Department, uh, GEC Baruj, I am welcoming all for today's expert lecture, which is Professional Basics of Steel Connection Design. The session is mainly aimed for fifth semester and seventh semester students, those who are learning steel design, and to make them aware about professional processes, professional aspects of steel design, particularly steel connection design. Today's expert, Mr. Prathmesh, Prathmesh Sankar Das, has completed BTEC from MS University Baroda in 2011. He has completed MTEC master's degree from uh, College of Engineering Pune in 2013. And from the college itself, he was recruited to a company which is Walter P. Moore. And till date, he's serving in the company. The company is internationally providing structural engineering, diagnostics, civil engineering, traffic engineering, water resource, et cetera, uh, having headquarters in Houston, Texas with about 700 plus employees worldwide, having uh, 26 offices in USA, plus four or five other countries. Mr. Prathmesh Shankardas is working with Pune office. Now he has been designated at, as, as assistant manager. His specialty is in steel connection design. He has completed more than 25 steel design projects by him. He has designed more than eight sports stadiums worldwide, including the very recent, that is Motera Stadium, which is now known as Narendra Modi Stadium. So as I had uh, described to you, today's session will be aimed not just on uh, steel connection design theory or code references, but mainly it will be aimed to what a professional structural consultants of what a professional the practices in such area of structural engineering, how they are getting drawings for architecture, what are the parameters uh, decided for designing, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. So this uh, giving a brief introduction. Once again, I'm welcoming all and uh, requesting our expert to host the stage and deliver their lecture. Over to you, Prathmesh, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Saral, sir. That was that was really kind words. Uh, thanks a lot. And I'm sharing my screen now. Uh, let me know when you can see my screen. Yes, it is visible. OK, perfect. So. Um, hello everyone. My name is Prathamesh Shankadas. That was a really good introduction by Swaral sir, and I'm I'm really pleased to uh, give this presentation for uh, for for uh, on connection Endma, design. And uh, so um, on connection design uh, on connection design. So um, I've been uh, working uh, working in uh, Walter P. Moore since uh, past more than eight years, and I've been doing this uh, work. Now, um, uh, I just if to begin with, I want to uh, show the reason why I have stick to this company for eight years because um, sticking to a single company for eight years is really uh, weird these days. So I, I would just display what exactly uh, kept me in this company and uh, and that would also introduce uh, what what work I have done. So uh, just to begin with. Uh, Here is my first project. That's Kyle Field Stadium. Uh, it is an American football stadium, which was earlier. Um, it was it was a, a renovation project. Uh, earlier, its capacity was 40,000, uh, 40, but in the year 20, 2013, 
um this was completely renovated it was uh, it was uh, it was demolished in parts with the, the you can see the um south and the uh, south and the west was uh, demolished first it was re, uh, it was reconstructed and uh, later uh, and then a season was played and then again uh, it was uh, the rest of the stadium was demolished and then again uh, rest of uh, it was reconstructed so it was really uh, a great great um, experience to work on this project and it was it was my first project so i have done all the um, all the sheer connections on uh, sheer connections and moment connections on this uh, project so this this went on for uh, for an year or so uh, later, this is uh, this is a ballpark stadium. That's a uh, SunTrust uh, Park uh, for a baseball stadium. Uh, this was also a very a long uh, long duration project, which uh, which had like um, uh, eight thousand tons of uh, steel. And uh, interesting uh, interesting bowl uh, arena. Um, we also did the roof the, uh, roo uh, connection design for the roof of this project. Um, this is uh, an, uh, this is the most interesting one i would say uh, from the list this is mercedes benz stadium also um, also um, a home venue for atlanta falcons uh, stadium At atlanta falcons team that's an american football uh, team um, I'm, I'm sure it's not very um, like american football is not known a lot but uh, it's it's a craze in um, uh, in us for it so if you if i have permission i would like to play um, uh, so the reason why um, um, I say this is very special because you can see this is the top view of this this arena, uh, and you can see uh, like the video I'm playing now uh, would tell you why why this is very special. Wasn't that cool? Uh, so as as uh, I said, this is this is really spe special for this reason because it's a it's a retractable roof. Uh, the panels, the the uh, the triangle panels you see that those move along the along the roof and uh, it opens up uh, within a time sp uh, time span of um, uh, ten minutes. So that's that's way cooler. Um, and uh, we have done we have done the uh, connection design. I, I uh, did the connection design on this uh, this project. Um, now this is an ongoing project of um, in, uh, of uh, this is a soccer a soccer stadium in Nashville. Um, uh, this is the project is still going on. The construction is still going on. This is like very recent pick from from the site. Um, and we'll be taking this. Uh, we'll be taking an example of this project. Uh, I had a bigger uh, a role to play on this project, where I managed this this pro uh, managed the connection design uh, team. And um, so we'll be taking an example of this uh, this this uh, stadium. Uh, all the drawings uh, drawings and models will be referring. Uh, uh, referring uh, of this project, and uh, this was this steel. Uh, this uh, project was having around uh, 15 15,000 ton of uh, steel, and um, uh, yeah, this is also another beautiful piece. Piece. Uh, my next slide doesn't need an introduction. Uh, I know, uh, and um, this was our first um, first Indian um, stadium project, Motera um, uh, Cricket Stadium, also known as uh, Narendra Modi Stadium. Um, we did the roof design of uh, of this uh, of this uh, uh, of the stadium. Uh, it was a completely separate structure, which uh, you can see the V uh, columns, and um, 
compression ring and uh, tension ring at the top uh, supporting the tensile fabric so our company basically um, uh, exp expertises in uh, the tensile fabric uh, modeling and and uh, the the structure desi designed for for supporting that um, i personally got a chance to visit uh, this the stadium and it's really beautiful i think i think uh, everyone should do once um so the uh, another the next uh, um other than this we also um i've also done, I've worked on some hospitals and open arenas uh open and closed arenas um for for us and um some some uh confidential projects some confidential theme park projects so um uh now uh, another thing i want to inter uh, like uh, briefly introduce is uh, there's a it's something interesting about about the project or, or the site is there is a topping out ceremony in um, in in US when um, so when the uh, when the steel installation is going on or steel uh, um, is is getting placed on uh, placed uh, um, the last beam always the last beam which goes up has all the names written on it um, uh, so. Um, you can see my name written on this. Is, uh, this is the topping out ceremony uh, beam, which uh, for for the Nashville Stadium, which we just saw. So uh, I'm I'm playing one more video for you guys. Um, there uh, there are two reasons for playing this video. One is uh, introducing the topping uh, topping out ceremony. That's really interesting. And uh, the second is uh, to know how exactly a beam is placed from uh, ground level to um, uh, to its uh, actual location, and that uh, we will be using as a reference for our future for our further discussion. Uh, I'll be referring that um, for what what challenges it has, what challenges um, um, uh, comes up while you are lifting uh, while you are lifting that beam and uh, to place it at at its exact location. So we'll be referring uh, this this video. So please watch carefully. So I'm going to count from five. I want everybody to join in and then Mary is going to set things in motion and that final piece of steel is going to head over there and complete this structure. Okay, everyone, here we go then. After five, four, three, two, one, raise up in. Construction tradition originally, and it represents the safe construction and goodwill going forward for the longevity of this building. Big shout out to LPR, the iron workers who worked so hard these last few months. 6,000 tons of steel, 12,000 miscellaneous steel components, over 700,000 hours worked. And over it goes to our southwest corner. So, uh, so you saw how how that beam moves, uh, rotates in the in the air to uh, have its uh, come at its position. 
Um, now we'll we'll see in detail as we move forward in the presentation. We'll see uh, what other uh, you know uh, what other uh, problems do we have while rotating this beam in the air, or what to uh, get its uh, actual location. So uh, yeah, moving moving forward. Uh, Uh, let's let's uh, touch some basics, some theoretical uh, basics. I would I would try to keep this uh, little little short and brief because uh, you know and and have more of practical and visual uh, things. But thoda uh, to theory me jana padega. So um, uh, yeah. So what exactly is a connection? Uh, what exactly is a connection? Um, so basically, uh, it's an it's a, we can say a common node where to. Um, uh, structural members uh, are connected. Uh, there is a load transmission from at least one in at least one direction, um, and it's either uh, made of bolts, uh, like welds, bolts, and uh, like it used to be rivets. Uh, rivets are not no more used now. Uh, uh, like rivets uh, are no more used now. So, um, and then what are the methods? Uh, either it can be uh, bolts and welds. It has its own. Uh, each each welding uh, welding myth or sorry connection method has its own advantages and disadvantages. We'll be going through those, and um, so. But as a designer, we have to uh, keep in mind. Uh, we have to provide um, a most uh, efficient and uh, most efficient and stable uh, stable connection, which would keep your uh, client happy. Uh, now. Uh, and all the part and now a connection has uh, a different a resemblance a different resemblance or different uh, level of importance for all the parties involved sorry so when i say parties that includes uh, owner design engineer uh, fabricator and the uh, connection designer now uh, for the owner uh, he is least bothered about the connection design. Uh, he is more like, OK, uh, overall, how, how am I looking? But it will be a problem for him if he's uh, thinking from an aesthetic point of view and he sees um, if if uh, my, the connection is is not really not really cool. Um, so. Uh, second thing. Uh, second thing, um, uh, the for the, for the uh, can, uh, design engineer, for the design engineer, um, it's um, it is important because um, that is going uh, like the design engineer designs the members, while uh, a design engineer uh, designs. Um, it is uh, designs um, the members while the, it has to be uh, correctly. Uh, the connection ha also has to be correctly designed so that the members uh, members doesn't fail or uh, the ends the holes we provide the, uh, in the in the uh, member doesn't doesn't make them uh, weak. Um, other than that, uh, it's it's most important for the connection designer. It's most important for the fabricator because uh, the easiest and the most efficient uh, design we provide. It's uh, and so uh, it it can be easily erected. Uh, that's that's what is required for the connection designer and the fabricator. So it has different. Uh, uh, the connection has a different um, a different importance for all the parties. Um, Unfortunately, we are not uh, the connection connection part is not uh, touched in detail for in our academics. Um, while while it has uh, it is it is a it has a significant importance in in a steel structure. Uh, all right, so uh, looking now going into the a little bit detail uh, um, for the types of uh, types of methods, uh, types of connection designs. Um, uh, just give me a second, sorry. OK, so um, uh, am, I, am I audible? Am I, everything is fine. Uh, this is just me talking for the last five, 10 minutes, so I just want to check. Uh, so, sir, if you can just confirm. No, no, you are clearly audible and okay. visible. OK, Only perfect. thing is, I don't know why your, uh, your front camera, which shows your face, is keep, uh -huh. keep on moving. I, is it automatic or I don't know? Yeah, it is. It is automatic. Moving. I am moving. So, I am moving. So the camera is also. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Okay. I mean, and uh, another suggestion we are also getting for Mr. Prasmay that uh, if in between you you are comfortable with using Hindi or Gujarati, then also sure. it will be fine for students. So 
so that perfect, the connection perfect. between uh, you and students will be uh, mo much perfect. more strong yes perfect, you can perfect. continue yeah th thanks thanks for the feedback uh yeah i'll uh, so yeah i'll, I'll try to uh, uh, communicate in uh, hindi and gujarati so um मैंने बड़ोड़ा से किया मैंने बड़ोड़ा से इंजीनियरिंग किया है आई एम बॉर्न ब्रॉड अप इन बड़ोड़ा बट गुजराती उतना स्ट्रॉन्ग पार्ट नहीं है बट आपने ट्राई करी सो दैट इज फाइन दैट इज फाइन ऑल राइट साउंड्स गुड सो स्टूडेंट्स ऑफ जीसी बरूच आर सो मच कैपेबल ऑफ अंडरस्टैंडिंग इन एवरी लैंग्वेज सो नो वरी फ्रॉम आवर साइड ऑसम 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 दैट्स ऑसम ऑल राइट सो Uh, looking looking at the bolts um advantages uh, it has a consistent strength um alag alag size mein available hota hai uh, it 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 varies from half inch uh, half inch diameter till 1 and 1/2 inch uh, diameter um check karne mein easy hota hai fully completely tight hua nahi tightening is uh, tight easily kar sakte hain using a wrench or a spud wrench uh, different equipments um and which is the most important part easy easy inspection and easy uh, installation um aapko pata hi hoga ki um us mein ya har jagah labor is the most expensive uh, thing so jitna aap field pe uh, labor kam kar sakte ho labor ka kaam kam kar sakte ho fabricator ko utna hi fayda hota hai and um uh, owner ko utna hi fayda hota hai so basically what um, what is expected from a connection designer is reduce the on site uh, labor Uh, as much as possible so in that case um, bolts are most uh, most efficient uh, wherever possible uh, so other, like these are the uh, positive points now disadvantages mein ye hai ki uh, we remove uh, because of because for uh, for bolting you need to hole you need to provide a hole in the member which reduces your uh, area which reduces your strength uh, it can uh, there can be a rupture in the uh, of the in the material um uh a good a good clearance is required for tightening ab uh, aapka jis taraf nut hai uh, ek taraf head hai bolt ka aur ek taraf nut hai so jis taraf nut hai wahan pe aapko at least 6 inch chahiye because um, uh, your wrench will be going in and tightening uh, you'll be doing the tightening from that end because agar dusri taraf koi koi object hai and um, yeah, so in that case you have to uh, make uh, come up with some other uh, innovative ideas or uh, some other other uh, connections um bolts ko unsightly man uh, uh, unsightly uh, gina jata hai because uh, nobody uh, likes to see a bolt on uh, uh, on a structure you know say uh, you are you are, you go to a stadium and you are looking at uh, you're uh, you're looking at the structure and you see uh, start seeing bolts uh, from from the bottom uh for us for me it's it's a beauty <laughs> but uh, no it's not that's not for a common man uh who has uh, gone to visit uh, visit a stadium so it's it's uh, it looks uh, it's considered unsightly uh, unsightly for um, in 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 layman terms so that's why it's also avoided uh where where aesthetics is a, a bigger point um all right then welds um weld material is uh, stronger than the base material so uh it's always uh, effective it's it's always uh, it it gives a required strength um koi uh, koi area koi member remove nahi karna padta hai jaise uh, jaise hum uh, bolts ke liye uh, um hole hole uh, banate hain waise weld ke liye kuch remove nahi karna padta hai um but now the disadvantages are disadvantages are uh, welding ke liye aapko skilled labor chahiye it's it's not like anyone can go and do uh, do labor uh, do uh, welding ना उसमें भी एज वी गो इन डिटेल जितना स्पेशलाइज जितना स्पेशलाइज वेल्ड होता है उतना ज़्यादा उतना ज़्यादा स्किल लेबर आपको लगता है आपका इंस्पेक्शन महंगा होता है बिकॉज इंस्पेक्शन के लिए वापस आपको यू हैव टू कॉल फॉर स्पेशल एंड एक्सपोर्ट इंस्पेक्टर सो एंड दैट्स रियली रिक्वायर्ड ऑन द साइट सो दैट इज़ अ कॉस्टली अफेयर वेल्डिंग इज ऑलवेज अ कॉस्टली अफेयर एंड especially on site welding uh, welding on site is very expensive and very uh, cumbersome because aapko wo pura equipment utha ke wo location tak leke jana padta hai and then you have to weld it so 
uh, as a better practice, as a, um, a best practice, I would say we uh, try to avoid um, uh, welding on site, um, and it's always preferred to bolt on site. So welding in shop, uh, bolting on site. All right, um, that's that's what exactly what I said. Now. Um, um, we always try to avoid field welding and uh, do as much as po uh, like bolting as much as possible. Now you can see this is a this is a bigger, a very wide assembly. Uh, you can see um, where the where all the welding is done in uh, on uh, has come. This assembly is was totally uh, transported from uh, on a truck from uh, shop uh, fabricators uh, workshop to uh, the site. It will it will be uh, it will be hanged to the crane. It will be placed uh, wherever it uh, it has to uh, it has to be it has to go, and just the bolting will be done. So and bolting a fayda ye hai na ki ab do bolt bhi laga lo na to bhi wo self weight le lega uh, and you don't need the crane anymore while um, uh, while um, iska isme kya hota hai welding mein kya hota hai agar aap on site welding kar rahe ho to jitni der aap welding kar rahe ho na utni der aapko crane uh, crane se wo latka ke rakhna padta hai your crane is busy and crane is another um, expensive affair uh, they they like aisa uh, aisa kehte hain ki uh, us mein crane operator earns more than an engineer okay so um, it's it's another uh, expensive thing so jitna ho jaldi ho sake agar aapko crane release karna hai crane se crane se zyada se zyada kaam karwana hai din mein so you have to um, uh, you have to be efficient you have to uh, think about these things okay I hope I hope I'm uh, get, uh, have uh, I have all the attention and these things are uh, really interesting. Uh, so I can I can yeah I can go on I can go on talking of course. Uh, but uh, yeah. Okay. So um, now looking at the bolt grades and a little more detail about uh, more uh, about the bolts. Uh, so commonly used uh, bolt grades are A325 and A490 bolts. Um, isme ek aur type aata hai bolts mein. Uh, it's a tension control bolt. Just me, um, it's a twist. It's also uh, called twist off. So basically, it has a spline at the end. Uh, it has a spline at the end where um, so once you uh, once you put that gun uh, or the wrench at the end, uh, and it attains the required tension, the spline breaks off. The spline twists off, so uh, which ensures that jitna uh, bolt me tension chahiye tha, utna mil gaya hai. So that's uh, and that has a specific grade. So that's uh, what that's what is mentioned. F1850 and F2280. These are the equivalent um, grades for for these. Now, um, uh, maximum grade, uh, maximum bolt, which we use, karte hain, wo hai, uh, usually, I would say, uh, usual projects, which we use, is uh, 7 8 inch and 1 1 8 inch. Uh, 7 8 inch, sorry, uh, uh, I have been, I uh, have US codes uh, US codes uh, and I have been working on FPS, so I will be referring to inches. Uh, please, please bear with me. Um, so usually, uh, usually what uh, what uh, we use is uh, seven eight inch and one one eight inch. Now seven eight inch bolt may uh, uh, now there is one more bolt in between which is one inch bolt, but we do we do not uh, we don't we do not uh, take that we uh, def like uh, intentionally we leave a gap of one bolt diameter because agar ab seven eight inch or one inch bolt hath mein lete ho na, so uh, it's difficult to uh, differentiate visually. So uh, it's diff difficult for the site uh, uh, site people to uh, to visually differentiate, and uh, they might provide a seven eight inch bolt instead of a one inch bolt, which is a problem. So that's why to clearly visually differentiate, uh, we always go for uh, uh, like we always keep a gap of one uh, one bolt diameter in between. Okay. Uh, also, the grade matters. Um, if seven eight inch is A three twenty five, then uh, A uh, A uh, sorry one one eight inch is A four ninety. So that we get, uh, we can cover more uh, we can get more strength from one one eight inch bolts. All right. Uh, so that's that's a usual practice again. 
Now, there are two types of bolts, um, bearing bolts and uh, uh, bearing joints and slip critical joints. Now, what is a bearing uh, bolted joint? Now, if um, when the load is transferred, um, when a load is transferred in bearing, for example, um, uh, yeah, I have, I have an image. Yeah, so, so uh, over here, over here now, hole forget about other details I, I, I'll, I'll come back to this later but hole hai now that is just uh, just um, one sixteenth inch uh, bigger than the uh, bigger than the uh, bolt diameter so basically your bolt is your bolt is resting on that uh, hole uh, on that edge and all the transfer um, and these these plates are moving in different directions. So basically, it's the the load transfer is happening in bearing. Uh, while on other hand, the slip critical joints, these holes are a little wider. Uh, let me try making a sketch to explain. Uh, uh, let's do this. Mm. So this is the I'm drawing a cross section basically. So this is the plate. This is my bolt uh, bolt diameter. Okay. Uh, let's do this. Now this is going in this direction, and this is going in this direction. Okay, and this is my bolt. This is my nut. Sorry, my head of the bolt, and this is my nut of the bolt. So, in case of in case of a slip critical, uh, in case of a bearing bolt, ye ye apka aise hota hai. So basically, your uh, your your edges are almost touching, and this is this uh, the transfer is happening through in bearing, while in case of slip critical, uh, this this uh, nut and head is tightly like there is a pretension uh, pretension force in this bolt, which tightly holds um, uh, holds these two grip uh, two, two uh, plies together, the head and the nut, and there is also an additional washer in between uh, over here. Uh, I can I can draw that. So there is an additional washer here, which reduces the uh, hole diameter. So basically, this, this all this holds the uh, holds this member, and the transfer is happening through the friction, uh, which occur uh, which is there in over here. So basically, all the load transfer is happening at this at this surface. So that's a slip critical. Uh, that's a slip critical uh, joint, bolted joint. Okay. Uh, so I'll go back. Bolts, uh, bolts, slip critical. Yeah. Um, yeah. So the, those were bearing and uh, slip critical. Now in bearing, there is a subtype. Um, there is a N bolt and there is an X bolt. Uh, now N bolt is where um, your threads, uh, your threads are basically included in the shear plane. So included N. Remember. And uh, the X bolt is where your uh, threads are excluded from your shear plane. So this is the shear plane, and your threads are not part of this, uh, not part of uh, the shear plane. So that's an excluded. So excluded X. Uh, that's how we remember. And uh, so this is very important to specify uh, on the sheet or on the DDL that uh, if you're providing a bearing bolt, uh, then what type of a bearing bolt it is. It is a N bolt or an X bolt. So that's that's really important. Now. <clears throat> It's easy to um, it's easy to uh, confuse between the X and N. Um, uh, so, for example, uh, take the right uh, take the oops sorry uh, take the right hand side example. ये bolt है जो अभी provide किया हुआ है. Let's just take this example. अभी मैंने तो बोल दिया कि ये X होना चाहिए. ठीक है मैंने मैंने डिटेल में मैंने डिटेल में लिख दिया कि इट शुड बी एन ए थ्री ट्वेंटी सेवन एट इंच ए थ्री ट्वेंटी एक्स बोल्ट बट साइट पे जाने के बाद साइट पे जो बंदा उसको बोल्टिंग करने वाला है 
उसने अगर ये बोल्ट उल्टा दे दिया तो ना इफ यू थिंक यू जस्ट विजुअलाइज दैट व्हाट इफ दिस बोल्ट गोज अदर वे राउंड लाइक हेड के जगह नट आ गया नट के जगह हेड आ गया सो विल दैट बी एक्स बोल्ट एनी मोर नो दैट विल बी एन एन बोल्ट नाउ which will reduce your capacity now uh, there is a 25 uh, there is a 25% of um, uh, reduction in the capacity if it goes from x to n all right so that's that's considerable and it shouldn't be it shouldn't happen so most probably until unless you are very sure that uh, the site uh, the site people will be taking care and you get an assurance for from the fabricator that yeah you please go ahead with the uh, with x um, uh, bolts we will be taking care of uh, that these bolts are are uh, excluded bolts only then we consider x um, in the calculation otherwise conservatively we design for n bolts and agar um, n wala x exclude kar deta hai agar x ho jata hai so koi problem nahi hai it just increases the capacity but agar x wala n ho gaya then it's a problem right okay so um, that's the so that's the bearing bolt uh, story of the n and x um slip critical um, as i said the the transmission of the loads uh, happen uh, through friction so it depends on the friction surface now there are two uh, basically two types of surfaces class uh, classified surfaces class a and class b now class a has a uh, friction coefficient of 0.3 and uh, class b uh, b has a friction co coefficient of 0.5 now what is the difference uh, between class a and class b and how these are attained so basically uh, there is a paint uh, for class a um which which uh, if you are taking a slip critical bolt from a vendor he provides you uh, provides you class a surface uh, paint for free uh, if you are taking a quantity or it it's a hot dip galvanized uh, and roughened or brushed with a wire wire brush uh, they just they just uh, scratch out the area where your washer and your uh, nut is going to rest so they just scratch out from a wire brush and you you can attend this uh, class a surface but for class b it's a special it's a specialized process it's a special process because it has to be blast cleaned uh, it has, um, uh, in a furnace and the surface uh, and that particular surface, uh, surface um, is is unpainted it has to be attained uh, it, it has to be attained because uh, it's a specialized surface now there is um, uh, as you can see uh, because of this difference in mu uh, the coefficient uh, uh, coefficient uh, friction coefficient there is a um, there is a difference of 67% in their capacities so class b provides you 67% more capacity than class a okay uh that's that's uh, regarding the bolt uh, bolt capacities of uh, differences between the slip critical bolts now uh, what what are then if uh, uh, what exactly is the tension in the bolts the um because if we are as i drew here um isko humne आई टोल यू कि इसमें इसमें हम हम इसे इतना टाइट करते हैं कि दिस दिस बेसिकली दिस प्लाइज दिस दिस नट एंड बोल्ट होल्ड दिस दिस प्लाइज सो इसमें एक पर्टिकुलर अमाउंट का टेंशन चाहिए ना सो ओनली ओनली देन दिस विल दिस विल कीप कीप दोज प्लाइज टुगेदर अगर इसमें पर्टिकुलर टेंशन उतना प्री टेंशन नहीं होगा सो इट इट वोट कीप द प्लाइज टुगेदर इट वुड इट वुड लूज एन अप right so that is defined by the uh, rcse that is research council of uh, structural connections in collaboration with uh, aisc american institute of steel uh, steel uh, construction and uh, they have given this uh, these uh, particular values now uh, according to um, and um, these you can i can i can uh, share these values with you but i didn't i didn't want to go in so much of detail um they are they are key specific uh, like if you have this kind of a connection then it should have this much of uh, uh, tension so uh, i don't want to go in that detail but there is a specific uh, tension value which which uh, we need to attain now um the bearing bolts are snug tight now what is snug tight Uh, आप जब घर पे कोई नट ट्राई ओके फॉर फॉर एग्जांपल घर घर पे नट का छोड़ दो आप जब कार uh, का, कार का व्हील निकालते हो एंड यू टाइटन इट 
so uh, uh, the force you apply with hand uh, to tighten that bolt नॉट के उस पर खड़े रह के जो ट्रक वाला ट्रक वाले निकालते हैं वैसा नहीं लेकिन एक नॉर्मल फो आप जितना मैक्सिमम फोर्स लगा सकते हो उतना लगा के वो जितना टाइट होता है दैट इज स्नक टाइट ओके सो द बेरिंग बोल्स आर स्नक टाइट इजी एंड द स्लिप क्रिटिकल बोल्स हैव टू बी टेंशन दैट्स प्री टेंशन ओके राइट so this fully uh, fully tension or pre tension uh, are um, are used in specific uh, in used in specific um, uh, what say cases like low jahan pe load river uh, load reversal possible hai uh, tension uh, uh, say a moment connection jisme bolt pe mo, uh, tension aane wala hai and uh, a tall building um jahan like it has many uh, uh, like load reversal seismic lo uh, load resisting system this uh, also needs like pre tension bolts so as as soon as we get an sfrs um, uh, we are we activate that okay now we need to provide a uh, pre tension bolts here okay now another uh, another okay why i'm not <laughs> all right so another thing is uh, what are, what types of holes we uh, we need to uh, mention because ye sari details hame uh, detail uh, hame uh, apni sheet mein jo hum detail dete hain usme mention karna padta hai for example kuch slides pehle maine aapko ye dikhaya tha so this is the, uh, so the right hand side image you can see is uh, a standard detail of a beam to girder connection it's a beam to girder connection and it uh, we provide a we provide all this information uh, to go along with it because uh, otherwise it's incomplete so we have to mention uh, we have to mention the bolt uh, uh, the bolt size the bolt grade bolt hole type and uh, the weld the um, uh, the distance the dimension from from top of the beam the uh, the distance of the first bolt from the from the support all this information need to go so we'll go through we'll uh, go through this uh, so other uh, another thing or the next item we, we are looking at is a bolt hole so where um, where are these uh, and how are these bolt holes used so uh, for a for a bearing bolt we usually go for a standard uh standard hole and it's okay but imagine this that um, uh uh there are two plies connecting and um, both are, both of them have a standard hole lekin aise dekhte hain lekin agar standard hole dene ke baad um agar site pe site pe uh usme wo jo additional uh, distance rehta hai or the additional tolerance hai one uh, uh, standard hole mein that is just 1/16th more than the bolt diameter what if there is a mess up on the on the site uh for example sorry for example uh what if ellipses uh, This is your uh, diameter, uh, bolt diameter of the beam, and आपका जो प्लेट पे आया वो ऐसे आ गया. What if this happens? I'll give a different color. जो प्लेट प्लेट पे जो बोल्ट होले वो ऐसा आ गया. So now you can, your bolt cannot go in. You are stuck. So uh, for this reason, we provide a uh, we provide a uh, slip SSLT hole. which is short slotted a uh, sl short slotted hole in one of the ply it uh, mostly it's the connecting material which is a shear plate or a flange plate or uh, plate and it's a standard hole in the member which is the beam web or uh, or any connect whatever connecting member we are, we provide which is more important so we don't want to lose a lot of a, a material from our member while we can design a, a plate uh to have this uh, member uh, like material loss so we provide this sslt hole and uh, these these holes um, in in uh, uv use accordingly now for uh, now for uh, slip critical bolts it's uh, it slip critical bolt can be uh, used in oversize holes uh, slip uh, sslt and lslt Now, uh, because uh, आपके टॉलरेंस पर डिपेंड करता है कि आपको कितना टॉलरेंस चाहिए इरेक्शन टॉलरेंस हो या फिर ट्रांसपोर्टेशन टॉलरेंस हो 
कितना आपका इन मेनी कंडीशन यू वॉन्ट यू वॉन्ट अ रिलीज कनेक्शन यू वॉन्ट एक्चुअली रिलीज कनेक्शन यू वॉन्ट योर बीम टू मूव यू वॉन्ट यूर एक्सपेक्टिंग अ मूवमेंट सो इन दैट केस यू प्रोवाइड एल एस एल टी होल your your uh, it it should not take an axial load it, it you just want to design it for vertical shear so in that case you provide an lslt hole so it can be parallel it can be perpendicular uh, depends so uh, the combination of uh, bolt type like bearing and slip critical depends on your uh, requirement okay um that's that's exactly what i said slip critical bolts uh, you can provide in any bolt hole but the uh, but the shear capacities will uh, will vary because um, uh, if you are providing if you are providing uh, a slip critical bolt in a oversized hole or um, um, or um, uh, lslt hole your uh, your shear capacity reduces now you have to make that balance where you want to lose on your capacity and pro get uh, get movement or achieve movement or achieve uh, have that tolerance so that's that's the job of a connection designer um uh bearing bolts are used in standard uh, standard holes and uh, transversely uh, slotted holes because basically you are uh, you are transferring your your uh, load in bearing so the, the edge on which it's it's supporting okay now uh, how do we specify a, uh, a bolt in uh, in a detail like like we just saw so for example it's a uh, 3/4 inch a325 uh, sc that's yeah 3/4 yeah, inch a, a 325 scb uh, in lslt hole 1 uh, inch 1 uh, inch uh, a490 uh, x bolt Uh, in standard hole and and if it is slip critical if it's a slip critical uh, bolt it has to be oversized or lslt or um sslt hole all right so that's that's really important um thing um connection design may one thing uh, just to, uh, just to keep in mind connection design may engineering is one thing and जो आपने डिजाइन किया है वो डिटेलर तक या वो फैब्रिकेटर तक जाना इज ऑल्सो इक्वली इंपॉर्टेंट आपने सपोज डिजाइन तो कर दिया कि मुझे थ्री क्वार्टर इंच प्लेट चाहिए और मुझे आपको आपके डिजाइन में से आपके आपने एल एस एल टी या एस एस एल टी डिजाइन तो कर दिया लेकिन वॉट इफ इट वॉट इफ इट डजन रीच योर फैब्रिकेटर so in that case it's an incomplete information you are going to get questions later ke yahan pe hole kaun sa dena hai because uh, of course wo site pe jaane se pehle to wo apne wo model hoga and you will be getting questions so uh, you need to um you need to try and visualize this the, all this information uh, get into a package of a connection design and deliver it to the uh, to your client right so so uh, agar aapne ek hi go mein sara information use already de diya उतना आपको लेटर क्वेश्चंस कम आते हैं यू वी कॉल इट आर एफ आईज रिक्वेस्ट फॉर इन्फॉर्मेशन साइट आर एफ आईज होते हैं डी आर एफ आईज डिजाइन आर एफ आईज होते हैं फील्ड फिक्सेस बहुत बार रिसेंटली अभी वन ऑफ द प्रोजेक्ट आई वाज वर्किंग ऑन इज इज इन फैब्रिकेशन एंड आई रिसीव रिसीव्ड अ क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम साइट कि बोल्ट होल मैच नहीं कर रहा था एग्जैक्टली एग्जाम्पल आई गेव यू कि बोल्ट होल मैच नहीं कर रहा है अभी क्या करना है सो दीज आर दी दिस इज अनवॉइडेबल अगर साइट अगर फैब्रिकेटर फैब्रिकेशन एरर है तो उसको कुछ कर नहीं सकते वी हैव टू गो फॉर अनदर सोल्यूशन बट जितना इन्फॉर्मेशन आप डिजाइन कर रहे हो यू हैव योर इन्फॉर्मेशन दैट शुड बी दैट शुड बी पास ऑन इन 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 द फॉर्म ऑफ अ डिटेल सो this is a, this is a, a detail of a hss connection hollow section a uh, uh, rectangular hss uh, for for shear connection i think this has uh, uh, i think this has shear and um, axial that's the reason why we have provided such a heavy uh, like heavy connection but if you see it, uh, what what is different in this connection is we have used a threaded rod okay now uh, this is basically a rod which ha which we have uh, threaded on the on the edges we have provided the threaded length because um, uh, we we don't want to uh, then now we have to go uh, we have to decide that we want it to be n or we want to we want to we want it to be x it has a specific grade which is available in the market 
and uh, the most important thing to uh, we have mentioned in this detail is uh, note number three. Uh, I'll read it for you. Install heavy hex nuts on each side of the threaded rod. Tighten the nut sl uh, slightly less than snug tight as over tightening might bend the side walls of HSS. Strike or mar threads to prevent loosening of hex nuts. OK, now uh, you, uh, you, you, uh, you must have got uh, the, the idea behind, behind giving this note is uh, if if agar koi ghar pe jhagda karke aaya hai koi site wala site mein banda and he over tightens the uh, tightens the bolt your wall of the hss will will bend you don't want to uh, you don't want that you don't want to uh, bend your uh, hss member you don't want to um, uh, like deflect that okay buckle that um so it has to be slightly less uh, less uh, tightened than a snug tight and jitna uh, abhi ek bar tighten agar ye thoda sa thoda sa kam tight kiya hai so there is a chance ki jab ye jab is pe force aayega it might uh, it might unlock it might uh, untighten on its own because yes uh, because humne loose choda hua hai so it's other another important note is to strike the uh, strike the threads just strike off the threads so that ye loosen na ho in future so this is the level of uh, le level of detailing or this is the level of information uh, we we need to consider we need to uh, uh, visualize we need to uh, think about and then provide information accordingly otherwise otherwise um, uh, uh, engineering wise I would say it's it's an easy job, but uh, having these details uh, included, uh, this all this information included is is a uh, big thing. Uh, <clears throat> and that for this reason, uh, to to have this uh, knowledge, we we design our own, we detail our own connection uh, connection sketches. Like the, I designed, I detailed this, I prepared the sketch of this. We don't we. Um, because that's that's how you know that okay if I did I miss anything did I miss any information did I miss any uh, uh, member size or did I miss any uh, whole, any any kind of um, uh, member member information okay so that's that's that was about the threaded rod moving so just summarizing bolts there are two types of two major types of bolts bearing bolt slip critical bolts. In bearing bolts, there are n, n x. N is where uh, it's uh, the um, the threads are included in the shape plane. X, they're not uh, where. Sorry, the uh, threads are excluded in the uh, from the shear plane. Then there is slip critical, where uh, the transmission happens through uh, through friction uh, between the uh, between the plies, and it has to. Uh, uh, there are two uh, uh, fang surfaces. Like surface is expected, class A, class B. Um, there are we also saw threaded rods where and and the level of detailing required for uh, while mentioning a bolt uh, in the detail. Okay, um, moving ahead, I wouldn't take a lot of time in welds because uh, weld is it is a complicated uh, subject. But overall, if you see, it's um, um, you can you know you you uh, can easily design it. OK, so the types of uh, th there are three main types of uh, welds fillet weld, um, uh, PJP partial joint penetration and complete joint penetration. So basically when you want to develop um, uh, develop um, uh, member capacity, you go for a CJP uh, or a very thick fillet weld. OK, uh, so um, I think I think this information is already like um, uh, is already uh, covered in the academics. I just wanted to touch touch this. Uh, <clears throat> uh, now CJPs are uh, CJP uh, as I said earlier that um, welding needs uh, welding needs specialized labor skilled labor is uh, is especially for the PJP and CJP uh, for for every CJP weld uh, the fa uh, so the fabricator has to assign uh, has to assign an inspector to check the CJP weld. For every C every CJP weld, so that's the reason why fabricators avoid try to avoid having CJP welds on site. Okay, 
<clears throat> Sorry. So um, uh, that's the reason. Uh, that's another reason why we pr we try to provide a PJP or a fillet weld wherever possible. If it's exactly uh, like very much not possible to provide a CJP weld, to hum, uh, um, uh, like a PJP or a fillet weld, to hum, uh, we uh, to we go for um, CJP, a uh, complete joint penetration. A plug and a slot weld are rarely used. Okay. Now, uh, aaj ka hi example jo main bata raha tha, site, se, uh, site pe uh, jo issue aaya, uh, usme, uh, they have used a plug weld. Now, what they said, what happened is um, the bolt hole was missing. I'm, I'm going a little bit out of, uh, this is interesting, out of the topic, but uh, this is uh, like interesting. So, uh, so basically, there are three, this is my shear plate. Now, the beam aya, hmm, beam pe jo, so ye ek to match kar raha hai. I'll give this blue. So beam ka jo hole aya, wo match kar raha tha. I'll keep it a little bit. Lekin jo, <coughs> pehla wala to match kar raha tha, lekin jo dusre aya, wo aise the. They did, uh, they somehow uh, uh, placed or did the drilling at one uh, at uh, three inches while the spacing given was three and a half inches. So this was a fabrication error. So what they said is what we uh, so plate to I will sorry. So plate is fine. We are not going to make any changes in the plate. Uh, so come on. So plate to take plate ko uh, beam jo hai. Usme we will keep a first weld as it is. Niche ke jo do first bolt hole as it is. Niche ke jo do do holes hai. Usme uske piche ke taraf we'll put a brass plate. We will plug weld this. Now we'll put a plug in here. So basically they will put they will put a, a small piece of a small piece of steel and provide a plug weld here. Or and basically fill this up with the weld material. And uh, then they will drill holes again to match with this. OK, so that's uh, and uh, for for us, it's a uh, it's fine. We, we just we just start to say, uh, yeah, that's a, that's a um, that fix is fine. Uh, we are fine. So basically it's a fabrication fabricators uh, preference. And uh, as long as we don't have any objection, we um, we are fine with it. Uh, it's not reducing any uh, any strength. I checked that and uh, I said, OK, yeah, you can go for it. OK uh just to uh check on swirl sir i'm going at a good speed fine uh, like everything is fine yes it is fine Only okay. thing is uh, looking to the remaining content you mm -hmm. can estimate that uh, now it's already 4 30 and right. if you want to keep at least five to ten minutes questionnaire at the end and we yes. want we are uh, if we are aiming to finish it by five or five ten at the latest yes yes yes, yes. so I'll, uh, you are the base just to uh, recite your yes. page. It's yes, yes, done, 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 done. Yep. And, uh, 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 and if I'm not wrong, you are also uh, having, you are also going to show some Tecla. Uh, yes, uh, yes. Model. Tecla model, uh, yes. For, for the students, which will be most important, I think. Yes, yes. So looking to that, you can decide your pace and. Yes. Yeah, I'm almost done. I'm almost done. Yeah, I'm almost done with the presentation yeah, yeah. part. After this, I'll uh, will will start with the Tecla model. See, see. The point is, though it looks little uh, informative, but at this moment, the students will not understand. Or there are certain students who are really willing to uh, acquire this type of professional skills or professional right. skills. Right. Right. When they will they will do. When we were students, right, we were studying at bachelor's level or master's level. We were right. uh, not so much concerned about this intricate intricacy of structural engineering. But as right. you are rightly explaining and mm. experiencing these things while practicing, students will at least uh, Relate realize that just solving a problem or uh, calculating moments and shears and giving the depth accordingly and uh, designing, giving number of holes is not the last point, but right. that is the first point first while practicing point. from which right. you can you have to do the there are many other things. So right. from that point, right. it is really nice of you that you are explaining such uh, things with the intricacy. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Sounds good. That's that's thank you for the feedback. That's really helpful. Uh, all right. Yeah. Now um, uh, talking about uh, this one very interesting example. This is this has become like a benchmark. <laughs> uh benchmark because 
this this was a ba this is basically a box girder okay this um I'll, I'll use a laser pen where is it yeah so this is three inches thick plate now one of our graduate engineer uh um, provided uh provided uh just went ahead and said okay provide a pjp okay now this is a three inch uh, uh, for welding this three inch thick plate and the length in and out of the uh, in and out of the page is uh, um, 10 feet so this had to have you can see number of passes here this is one pass two pass three pass four pass every every like uh, circle you can see that is that is the number of pass they have done for 10 feet there were 50 passes and uh, it took seven days to complete this weld. Now it's on the uh, now who should be uh, let's uh, blame is really really harsh word here, but who is the reason behind this? Th was this really required? In in my opinion, it wasn't. A, a, a smaller PJP would have worked. It's it wasn't really required to provide a, a, this thick of a PJP. Um, but because uh, I mean this this was uh, I, I'm I'm sure the uh, the engineer learned from this and um, we we should be learning from this that um, providing seven days of work in three shifts uh, it it took this much of time to weld this smaller as this small piece which wasn't really required so um, design your weld welds wisely especially when you are providing a PJP or a CJP. Doing a fillet weld is is not that you cannot uh, go for a very a really thick fillet weld. Okay, so this is this is a, a very great example of uh, wise uh, design wise design of uh, weld especially. Connection materials uh, usually the uh, the uh, 36 ksi uh, plate or 50 ksi plate uh, plate is used. If I uh, yield strength of 30 uh, 36 ksi and 50 ksi. You, um, uh, it was it was uh, usual for 36 earlier now nowadays it's 50 larger fabricators store a uh, store um, have a good stock of 50 ksi material so uh, but again you have to uh, check with the fabricator what is his preference what, uh, you have to check with the client what is his preference what material do he has does he have in his backyard or in his store that okay what what um, what is his preference okay now um well uh, now these are the details which we provide so this is a beam to girder connection uh, this is a conventional i call it a conventional method or uh, aic calls it a conventional method because this is a coped connection where um, uh, it's a coped connection where this uh, the eccentricity is considered uh, considered uh, to be um, half um, and uh, for the for the bold group connection there are some some uh, pointers uh, mentioned to call it a conventional method uh, but basically, um, uh, if every if all the pointers are satisfied, it um, you can consider only the half of the eccentricity from the center of the bold group. Okay. Now uh, this is a coped connection uh, where uh, then this is an extended connection, extended BG connection, and this is your beam to column flange connection. Okay. All of the, I have just taken a simple example of a shear plate connection. Um, this the stable goes uh, in our standard connection uh, the stable goes along with this detail which has all the information lev pl dbm top sv leh uh, like all the information goes along with this now this is the information which we provide to the detailer or uh, to the fabricator now there is one more guy or one more organization in between which um, works on this detail and who is the detailer Okay, there is a, there are detailing firms who 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 create Tekla models of uh, um, uh, from uh, and and um, from these information this information what you, what we have given and the model or uh, and structure what they have received from the uh, structural design team. Okay, now um, so what ex so this this details we provide and after that they provide a Tekla model. I'll just show uh, you the <clears throat> a glimpse of a Tekla model first. Uh, this is one simple uh, structure. Um, of uh, I, I cannot sorry I cannot tell you the uh, like project name because it's a confidential project. Um, but this is uh, this has all the connections uh, connections uh, detailed here. 
<clears throat> now, uh, to what level? There is a there is a term uh, used for uh, the level level of development of a model. Now, currently, this is this model is a LOD 400 model. Now, what defines the uh, that LOD 400? So, <clears throat> this is regarding detailing. Um, so BIM uh, level of development LOD 100 is for architecture where it's just pre-designed only the stick model uh, LOD 200 is the schematic design LOD 300 is where uh, uh, what what the structural engineer do in this uh, design development stays um, LOD 400 is during the uh, LOD 300 is during the construction design where, uh, documentation where you where you start uh, giving uh, where you start giving the uh, member sizes in the model. LOD 400 is a construction stage like the uh, how it is going to be constructed. Uh, that that uh, that has all the information regarding the surface uh, surfaces attained like paints uh, different types of paints surfaces bolt holes bolt uh, all the bolt and welds and everything. And um, uh, after that, still there are some changes which which uh, happens, and uh, we get the LOD 500, which is a as built model. So these are the level of development um, development in a model. It can be achieved through um, Revit, it, uh, latest uh, latest um, uh, version of Revit. It can be achieved from latest version of uh, Tecla. It can be achieved from latest version of um, Navis work. So um, there are there are different different softwares to uh, for this modeling and this is a really uh, important part of um, of a uh, project because uh, this is how you are providing the information okay uh, as i said design karna ek baat hai aur wo information pahunchana utna hi important hai okay now let's look at this uh, model so as we uh quickly we'll we'll touch uh, touch on some uh, basic structural drawings so basically when hum jab ek project start karte hain um ek uh, ek project start karte hain we get these raw uh, details so on nashville uh, nashville ka humne photo dekha tha uh, nashville uh, project iska so hame ye uh, drawings mile the uh this was in the and wo uh, uska sirf dd phase khatam hua tha tabhi design development uh, abhi CD phase uh, baki tha. So basically, uh, construction abhi member designs hone baki the. So they just gave us uh, gave us this uh, basic information. Um, ye dimensions hai. This is um, this is partial plan. Uh, yahan, so what basically we get is uh, from from the, these plans is um, okay. Konse connections hume design karna hai. Say for example, this is a W16 by 50. Uh, 16 by 50 I section member hai ye, wide flange bolte hai. so it has 15 kip of reaction a vertical reaction at the ends and the member just me ja it is a tapered 36 by 36 by 182 now this is the information which we basically need for connection design now on this basis we we segregate ki kitne type of ke connections hai. So that is the first thing we do and on basis of that information we create this connection map Okay, uh, we segregate the uh, we segregate the connection uh, uh, connections. We give connection IDs, and then for each connection ID, we provide a connection detail. Uh, like this is a connection detail. You can see HF001, BG003. So these are uh, for every connection ID, we provide a connection detail in the uh, in the sheets. And this this goes to the detailer and the client. Or for detailer, a bit detailer um, uh, detailer can be part of uh, your uh, design team, or he can be a client. Uh, he can be a, he can be part of uh, your client. So uh, sorry, yeah, the owner owner can directly hire your detailer. So that dep completely depends on the contract uh, contract you have. And uh, so after this is this is um, uh, you, uh, like the detailer receives this, he makes this um model a tecla model so now we'll go through the uh, go through different types of connections we uh, we we can as much as we can see now um this is a this is a extended connection bg uh, bg extended connection similarly you can see yaha pe isme four zyada tha is my axle uh, is my axle uh, we provided a heavier one now the video I showed you 
okay now the video i showed you uh, earlier was uh, i showed you for a reason because now if you think from this point of view how can you decide ki yahan pe hame extended dena hai ya conventional dena hai uh, is it so that that basically depends ki aapke paas yahan pe is so uh, ye iska construction kaise hone wala hai ye ye bahar se andar ki taraf aayenge so basically ye beam pehle aayega theek hai and then this beam will come in okay now um do you have enough lekin abhi agar isme maine extended connection diya hai yahan pe aur yahan pe extended connection hai hai guys uh, yeah yahan pe aur yahan pe extended connection hai so basically mujhe agar ye ye beam is taraf ye ye shear plate ke is taraf uh, rakhna hai to mujhe wo ऐसे शेप में लाना पड़ेगा लेट मी टेक अ स्क्रीनशॉट सॉरी कमान 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 कॉपी पेस्टेड सो बेसिकली मुझे ये वो ये बीम ये ऐसे सॉरी एक्सक्यूज मै ड्राइंग Uh, ये ऐसे यहां पे लाना पड़ेगा इस लेवल पे एंड देन आई विल हैव टू मूव इट राइट अगर मैंने अगर मैंने ऐसे लाया इतना ऐसे करके और फिर मूव किया तो एक तरफ ये इस तरफ शेयर प्लेट के इस तरफ होगा और इस और एक तरफ शेयर प्लेट के इस तरफ विच वी कॉल इट कॉल एज हैंड शेक मेथड सो बेसिकली वी हैव टू डिसाइड वेल इन एडवांस कि हमें कौन से मेथड में कैसे करना है वी वॉन्टेड टू बी ऑन द सेम साइड ऑफ द शेयर प्लेट ऑन बोथ द साइड और वी वॉन्टेड टू बी टू बी एज अंड शेक मेथड ओके सो ऑन दैट बेसिस वी डिसाइड कि हमें कन्वेंशनल मेथड पर जाना है या फिर एक्सटेंडेड कनेक्शन एक्सटेंडेड कनेक्शन करना है Uh, also depends ki load kitna hai agar isme if we have an axial load we need we need to transfer uh, that axial load through um, we need to transfer that axial load through the weld between the shear plate at the top and bottom okay uh, so we need a we need a extended uh, extended connection welded uh, where the shear plate is welded at the top and bottom okay uh, we'll see a uh, example of a moment connection here now uh दिस कॉलम has a moment a fixed connection at all, on all four sides okay the beam to column web beam to column flange all of them are fixed connection now what how uh, how is a uh, fixed connection hmm. what we'll do is we'll take an example so this is a beam and we have a plate uh which which we are going to transfer uh we we call it a flange plate bolted flange plate connection and then we have a uh, this moment so basically this this moment is going to be uh, transferred through the flanges in a couple form from here it would it will be transferred to the flange plate mm. through bolts through bolts and from uh, from the flange plate it will go to the column mm. okay now it, again there is a, a second point is if we have a member on the other side uh, if we have a, um, uh, a if it is a, connect, a moment connection due to gravity for say for example if it's a cantilever and a backspan say this is a cantilever and there is a backspan you don't uh, you might not need uh, to transfer any force to the column but if this is for due to a lateral force if you have a, a lateral resisting force system uh, you might have to transfer uh, transfer moment to in this column right so you need to design your column for that moment whatever moment you are you are planning to transfer transfer in the column 
you need to design your stiffener accordingly. Okay, now that's that's the uh, fixed. Uh, sorry, where did I go? Yeah, that's the fixed connection. It's bolted to the flange plate, and um, then it's uh, like welded. Now, uh, going to the uh, at this now this whatever force we have in the flange plate, how is that transferred to the uh, to the column? That is not transferred through the web. That that is transferred through the uh, we transfer it completely through the uh, at the flanges because if we transfer it from through web, it might buckle the we uh, column web. Getting it? So it it might buckle the column web, which is really um, like. In this case, we have a plate aligned, but what if uh, you cannot be you, you cannot be assured that it will be aligned in the site also? What if there is a slight um, uh, error in in that? So in that case, your column uh, column web will become a buckle out of plane, and it's very dangerous. Okay. Uh, so that's that was a, a quick introduction to brace. Uh, sorry, um, fixed connection. Uh, we'll see some brace connection, the simplest one here. Um, this is a simple brace connection where uh, I think this is not as, as simple for the first time. I'll, I'll bring one more. Hold on. Yeah, there you go. This is a better example. So this is a top brace, bottom brace. Uh, so a brace connection, a brace connection can be uh, can be resolved in uh, in, in two uh, two methods. One is called as a kiss method, and other is also uh, known as a uniform force method. So Soral sir, is that included in the academics? So I'll I'll, I'll introduce accordingly. Yes, um, for fifth uh, semester students, mostly I. I think this is not included, but for okay. seven semesters, and ladies, they have gone through this. Okay, perfect, perfect. Yeah. So, uh, so the basic difference is uh, basic difference in in this method is. Um, uh, in the kiss method, we uh, the vertical component, vertical connection takes your vertical component, your horizontal comp uh, connection takes your horizontal components, and you. Uh, but in this case, you have some moment because of the eccentricity at this interaction of the gusset and the beam. You can see here. Uh, uh, yeah, you can see your MC and MB. While in in case of a uniform force method, your resultants your your resultants are are um, are, are coinciding. And uh, you you have uh, your values like um, horizontal as well as vertical components in both the in uh, in both the interfaces of the gusset, and th uh, the resultants are such that you don't have any moment at this interface. So that what that what happens is that reduces the the um, the size of your connection. Now it's not there's not a right or wrong way. Both of the both the connect both the uh, both the uh, connections are right. The both the ways are right. It's it just depends ki how much time you have, how much uh, efforts you want to put, and um, uh, if you really care for if you really care with the size. Now, for example, if you if it's a fast paced project, um, you you get a you get a connection. Uh, you get a project that okay, I want uh, I want this connection done by evening. In that case, I cannot really go for a uniform force method to define that. Okay, what force it will have and what force I would have at these interfaces. I would go for a kiss method and complete it. So, um, it uh, so I'm I'm trying to show you the other side that how to def uh, how to decide on what method you want, you have to you might go for. Okay, uh, of course you should be knowing both the methods. <clears throat> uh, so. And then quickly, sorry, quickly going through the uh, connection failures. What 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 exactly uh, decides on the connection? Um, so I'll open a quick calc here. Uh, so this is our standard calculation for a BG connection beam to a beam to girder connection. And if you if you uh, like just glimpse at the list, this is the li list of limit states that we check. Okay, now we go one by one. Like first, we check the bolts. What can, what, what possibly can fail? Uh, uh, what possibly, uh, how possibly the bolt can fail? So it can fail in shear. It can fail in slip. If it's a slip critical bolt, uh, then we, uh, then we go for beam. What, uh, what beam? Uh, how the beam can fail? So we check, uh, we check all the limit states uh, related to the beam. Then we check uh, all the limit states related to the shear plate. What, uh, what all limit state? How can it fail? 
and uh, well and then good so basically we check each and every component involved in a connection okay uh, we go we draw we uh, do a quick free body diagram i have done a free body diagram for a beam a beam to column flange connection um vu transferring over here only thing is what about this this eccentricity so it, this eccentricity bec uh, actually yeah if you see a sorry no, this is like this so if you see a uh, bending moment diagram your your bending moment will be something like this and your uh, location of your bolt is here so basically there is some moment at this location now that your bolt group has to be designed for for that moment it it's not uh, like there won't be any moment at the uh, bolt group because it's a it's a um, uh, it's a uh, pinned connection okay there there is a bolt group uh, there is a moment at the uh, there might be a, a moment at the uh, connection materials connection items um, although the connection is although if the connection is pinned okay um so quickly again going through some complicated areas which uh, I, I, I decided to go through i'll take i'll take couple two couple of minutes more and then we can have take questions if we have so uh, yeah uh, one thing i just recalled uh, mm -hmm. whether i have missed it or uh, i don't know but uh, uh, can you just uh, give an introduction to the software which is tecla because mm -hmm. normally the students of civil engineering are aware about uh, stad pro e tabs okay. at the most uh, uh, few other uh, softwares okay okay for drawing autocad but this is the software which is uh, very renowned nowadays but right. students might not know about so if okay. you can give it just introductory uh, sure, sure. About the software. sure 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 yeah sounds good so uh definitely so this is this is a modeling uh, software tecla is a modeling software it's not an analysis software uh as i said um, uh when once we provide once a connection designer provides a connection uh and uh, and that is detailed uh in in this software you um um so for the first stage of uh, uh, analysis software is making a model similarly in a tecla you make a model or uh, these days we can we can uh, take a model directly from sap and uh, in in tecla and we can start make, uh, start detailing so um, you get uh, you uh, take a model and you start detailing this uh, you know a, the smaller details so that's that's tecla uh, earlier it was just just um, uh, used for steel detailing like we can see uh, you can see on the screen but nowadays it's also used um, uh, it, it is also used for rebar modeling rebar uh, detailing uh, for 3d modeling so uh, for uh, for example on this NHS, uh, the nashville project I, I just mentioned we actually submitted uh, lod 400 uh, if you remember the lod i, I showed you uh, the construction stage LOD 400 model to our client instead of any paper or any uh, any drawings we just submitted a model which was taken forward by their detailer later and because of this process they saved uh, like 1 billion approximately 1 billion dollars uh, because that that reduced their work uh, and uh, that saved a lot of labor uh, on on site so that's that's the uh, like quick quick thing about uh, tecla and how how it's uh, being being used and how it will be used uh, in in future so uh, definitely if anybody of uh, from you is interested in modeling um, anal analysis is one part and modeling is the second second stage of uh, of uh, a pro of a project so um, yeah this so, is uh, uh, this for uh, for analysis purpose what is the common practice or what is the uh, software that you use in at your company for designing uh, various it, structures in various countries okay so uh, we use we use sap and etabs for uh, for structural analysis uh, i think we can yeah um, so there is another another process which uh, another uh, practice area which we do in in our group is um, erection engineering so basically all this uh, the whole structure uh, or let me open the other one the, this whole structure is 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 uh, erected in a, in stages it's not erected in one go so how how is that staged 
what are the stages of that uh, of that uh, project or so that is erection engineering and we need different level of uh, a different level of analysis for that for that uh, um, that kind of a uh, that kind of an analysis okay so but we use sap and etaps for uh, for the analysis of of the project okay that that answers your questions for sir okay um so sorry we we were at uh, i was showing some complicated connection so yeah one last thing and we'll uh, take questions then um so uh, we are a little bit over our time uh oh, it's fine we can extend it up to 550 not an issue okay perfect yeah so this is something uh, a bit interesting so um so if you see at this level cutting for good vision uh there are one two three four five six six members coming in and the column is seventh so basically there are like seven members coming uh, coming in at one node not all of them are same one is a brace connection one is a moment connection the, the this beam is a moment connection this is a horizontal brace and this is a normal shear plate connection so uh now you can see how uh like look uh, currently it's already modeled that's why uh, that's why you uh, it's not very difficult to visualize and you can uh, you have a model to see uh, but while when we started we were we were having trouble to visualize that okay what exactly issues we might be facing what can be clashing here so um, if you uh, for the first question uh, what we ask is okay can this be erected can this um, bolt go in do we have enough space on this side to uh, press this bolt inside will this uh, flange uh, will this flange of the of the brace clash with this end plate what about uh, what about this weld will is this sorry i'm a, i'm a too zoomed in yeah uh, how will this brace be welded how will um, uh, how can they get this in so these are the these are the challenges we um, we have while designing one a, a complicated connection we have to imagine or visualize that what what issues can we face uh, and and then provide a solution accordingly all right uh, last thing uh, if you see the uh, this this is a double angle connection so on this project uh, this was a very fast project we had to submit like this uh, 1000 or 150 uh, tons of steel design connection in uh, less than a month so this was a very fast project uh, uh, confidential and uh, so what what the fabricator uh, we, and we worked for the fabricator um, so the fabricator's preference was a uh, was uh, time like he wanted to save time he didn't have any time to uh, uh, take their material to shop weld the uh, weld first and then bring it uh, then uh, deliver it to the site and then they would do the bolting no he just said uh, uh, what what the um, the priority was uh, saving time and what so what we did is we provided a double angle bolted bolted connection so basically in this case he just have to do for this connection he just have to cut um, uh, his member so the raw, raw members can come in on site the cutting can be done on the site and um, uh, he can just start installing nothing has to go in shop and uh, you know uh, prepare or weld or everything uh, anything like that so uh, in that case so that's the reason why we provided double angle connection um, now we uh, you can see that one bolt is skipped here uh, and that's deliberate because there is a beam on the other side which has a which has a shallower depth so if i provide a bolt here uh, it will hit and and on uh, the other reason is if i have uh, two uh, two double angles of same sizes uh, i will the crane will have to live uh, i will need two cranes one to lift this member and other to lift this member and then i will have to do a, a bolting simultaneously while if i have different uh, if i have different uh, uh, like elevations of the of the angles i can i can uh, so in the, currently what happened is this bolt came in for this beam came in first these two bolts were installed first while the crane was in place 
then this member came in and then this common bolting was done uh, so let's just just clear up if if uh, it it was clear if anybody has any questions no, no, no. Like, it was clear if anybody has question they can raise the hand so that i can switch on the mic i think it was clear okay perfect perfect so yeah that's that's i think i've uh, touched on the briefly on all the aspects i was i, I wanted to go through uh, yeah and if if uh, anybody has any questions they can reach out now or i'll, I'll drop and i'll drop my email id uh, and it is so nice of you uh you can anyone anyone can just reach out for in case of any questions anybody anybody having any questions if semester students uh seven semester students no matter whether that question is a, a rubbish question or yeah there is question, there is no dumb question about that yeah. see we both we all understand that at student level it is very difficult to at least realize i am not saying that understand or analyze just realize what is happening so looking to the purpose and the way uh, prof mesh sir has explained i think it has shown you a new window to a great field of structural engineering at least you are uh, seeing what is being happening every day on the field when we see a certain youth structure we we just feel mesmerizing but what is the pain up behind it what is the procedure what are the steps so so he has uh, explained briefly only in one one and a half hour but even though i feel that it's a, it's a very good good opportunity whatever question you have you can just raise your hand i will allow you to speak and as i know him he will be very happy to explain to you whatever your question is definitely definitely and and one very good point like uh, in the uh, before this call we uh, when i was uh, talking with swaral sir that uh, the the reason behind doing this uh, this presentation is not um exactly like going in detail of connection design but but uh, that the, the, but introducing that what exactly are the fee, uh, are the professional uh, aspect what is the professional aspect behind this connection design like what what uh, challenges we face and that's the reason why i, I tried to uh, include uh, okay what are the fabricators preferences and what are the um, uh, and and engineering is is just the beginning of a project so engineering uh, when we do complete an engineering we complete a design it's just a beginning of a project how you deliver that how you deliver that information to the client how you deliver that in house to your uh, to your uh, bim uh, bim guys who uh, model it for you in revit and uh, tecla and then how it reaches to the fab uh, detailer how it is fabricated in in this whole process there are n number of questions raised and n number of uh, issues raised so your basic what you are learning right now is just in, uh, the beginning of 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 the challenge true sir very true yeah i think for fifth semester students they will be feeling that in seventh when we will learn more about steel design we can have good uh, idea but for seventh sem particularly i would say that now onwards you won't have a subject for steel design unless you go for masters but the things which he has explained today is the basic things like uh, things about bolts things about welds how it is executed this is not something that you will learn in uh, college even you do phd these things are very difficult to learn because these are practical problems and practical professional processes processes which one has to undergo when they actually go uh, in some company so i would like uh, to ask prathmesh sir that what was that point at which when he joined the company and slowly and slowly he was introduced to such big projects and this intricacies was it scary or was it difficult that matching your theoretical knowledge learned in college level and uh, with this profession or what was your experience about it right uh, so The, as i said the, my first project itself was uh, was a stadium project and i did uh, very basic level uh, connections in that 
but while i was looking at other uh, others working on the same project i realized that uh, like whatever i am doing is definitely basic but there is a big challenge uh, in doing other other connections which i explained right now like doing a brace connection doing a complicated uh, connection where there are six members coming in or 10 members coming in uh, we did a project uh, we did a project complicated stadium project uh, where there were literally eight projects coming uh, eight uh, members coming in at a single node and all of them were hss uh, all of them were holo and uh, and and uh, dealing with a holo section is is a, is a challenge in itself so uh, these i i was more um, uh, like i was more uh, attracted or i was more um, uh, what's say impressed with this challenges of with each every each and every connection we have and as as i uh, as i worked on different types of connections different uh, different grades of connections it was it 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 built a, a, a more and more interest towards uh, towards connection design so um, so yeah that's 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 how i stayed in this this uh, this field and uh, uh, even like uh, in, uh, like uh, teaching and uh, not teaching but mentoring uh, mentoring the new uh, newcomers and then delivering a project there are different different levels of um, of uh, of the work or or delivery uh, delivering a delivering a project so all this all this uh, basically you should be you should be interested in what you are doing and uh, uh, ready to accept the challenges uh, and and innovate you know if one of the one of the coordinates of our company is innovation is not optional you need you should be innovative about your ideas you should be um if if you're facing a challenge don't go for a, a conventional method try out of the box think out of the box and uh, come up with a innovative solution uh, it might be wrong but abhi kaam nahi aayega ho sakta hai ki wo jo aapne idea abhi diya hai aapko abhi idea aaya hai वो अब इस इस पर्टिकुलर प्रॉब्लम में सॉल्यूशन ना हो लेकिन इट माइट बी इट कैन बी यूज्ड इन द अदर अदर प्रॉब्लम अदर इशू सो डोंट डोंट हेजिटेट फ्रॉम आस्किंग क्वेश्चंस डोंट हेजिटेट फ्रॉम गिविंग योर आइडियाज डोंट डोंट हेजिटेट फ्रॉम थिंकिंग आउट ऑफ द बॉक्स ट्रू ट्रू वन सेकंड आई थिंक आई एम जस्ट आस्किंग लास्ट टाइम students who have joined who have attended the session if you have any any question you can just raise your hand and i will allow your mic no, seven just... semester fifth semester Pratmesh sir, what we are planning is uh, we have started. Uh, we have we have been recording this session for all mm-hmm. when it started, and mm-hmm. after completion, we are going to upload this session with your due permission mm-hmm. to our institute's uh, YouTube channel, so that even those who could not attend to today, because right. the next right. is the submission uh, week is going on. Right. So for right. seven semester students, so those who have joined also, they might be also struggling because we are right. all understand the submission we can its importance right you can right. also watch it later and uh, uploading on youtube the upcoming semesters and upcoming batches and other institute students can also uh, avail the benefits so we would be with your due permission uploading yep. the session mostly on yes. tomorrow yes yes that's that's completely fine I'm, i'll be pleased if uh, like maximum people are are benefited with with this so it's so nice of you that you have provided your uh, email address students can uh, note down the email address if you are feeling any questions even in future if you are working in some company some field you are having any problem in steel design you can contact me or you can directly contact prathmesh sir giving reference of our gc bharuj reference of mine and i am sure that he will be very happy to help you and give you the correct guidance yes definitely definitely anytime so it was a very nice session and i'm sure that now onwards whenever students will look at any steel structure whether it is on railway station or whether it is on some industrial uh, shade or whether it is on some stadium maybe they will surely remember this session and remember you that uh, in this one and half hour session what exposure they got just by sitting at their houses in this right. uh, covid situation right and they will recall that this structure the joints are not just simple joints but it, it a lot of man uh, hours and energy has been utilized 
to execute such thing and it's a great great engineering marvel right right definitely definitely so, moving further i request our uh, respected head of the department professor dr narendra k arora to give vote of thanks and conclude the session sir uh, thank you uh, sir and thanks to uh, mr prathmesh uh, it is really great pleasure for all of us to hear you uh, importantly in teaching uh, we always talk about members hardly we touch upon the design of connections and right. so simultaneously very important thing is most of the failure most of the failure which are taking place they are taking place due not due to the failure of members but failure of connections only though uh, as a part of study the importance of connection is very less but practically the uh, connection has got significant role in safety of the structure structure so right. uh, so naturally uh, this is eye opening huh? for many of the students um they few of the students have just they have been introduced uh, steel uh, right. recently right. and uh, they were being right. taught about uh, 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 connections etc particularly bolted and welded connections so uh, rightly you have taken uh, these two uh, topics together that which one is better and which one is uh, in which case which is superior and in which case one is inferior right. uh, particularly one thing which the students might have uh, missed out is that uh, uh, these all connection particularly when we are talking about uh, connections of uh, connection using welding they are brittle and right. uh, when there is a possibility of uh, reversal of stresses particularly when Uh, the one which we have shown initially, the uh, the closure and uh, opening of the uh, roofing, the roofing system which you have shown, uh, it was open and closed. Right. And uh, in that in that case, there will be lot of suction actually. So uh, the topmost uh, portion is more likely to get vibrated because of uh, suction outside, right? so there is a possibility in that case there is a possibility of reversal of stresses and in reversal of stresses uh, there is a there are chances of uh, failure of uh, welding so in all such cases it is preferred to go for uh, well, uh, for bolted connection rather than uh, welded connection uh, anyhow uh, you have taken out your time and uh, spare uh, almost one and half hours for us so we are again uh, on behalf of civil engineering department and applied mechanics department and also from uh, student side uh, i specifically thank you uh, probably few of the students might be having some questions so we will be collecting it and will be uh, sending those questions to you um, we expect that you will be replying to them Yes, and uh, if there is any if there is any uh, one to one discussion is required from the student side then then also we will try to arrange uh, that part also definitely so once definitely. again prathmesh uh, thank you thanks a lot uh, for sparing uh, time and uh, enlightening our students thank you thank you thank thanks you. a lot thanks a lot the pleasure was mine thank you everyone thanks a lot thank you sir it was a very nice session i think yes. those students who have enjoyed the session at least they can uh, show their uh, response by giving the response possible actions thank you thank you very much thank you very much everyone and it was really uh, really good to uh, do this session uh, share my knowledge uh, i won't say i'm here to teach or uh, mentor i just wanted to share uh, share my knowledge what i've uh, whatever i have gained uh, in this year and i'll try to do the same in in future we are positive to have uh, good nice sessions from you in future also and with this good hope let us conclude to this yes. session thank, thank you. you thanks thank, a lot thank, thank you everyone bye take care thank you very much thank you very much